we're sitting here in Guthrie County, you know, some of the hill ground. Um, we're in a CRP field that uh, is predominantly brome grass. What I want to visit with you a little bit about is uh, transitioning from a perennial plant community like a brome grass, an introduced grass, and that transitioning that what we need to do for steps in order to go ahead and seed a nice native mix into this and get it established. What we know is we just can't go in here in a field like this and spray it in the spring and then plant into it. It'll look brown, it'll look like you killed it for a while, but typically then that's not enough and that brome will come back through. So what we recommend is we start this process in August and we want to take a field like this and then we want to mow it. Um, and we, I prefer earlier August than late just because some years I've seen it where we've had a real dry August and we don't get the regrowth back from that mowing. So once we've got this area all mowed, we want that to grow back, get real nice lush regrowth. And we'd like to have six to eight inches of that nice regrowth. And then we're gonna come in and spray it. September to mid-October, probably refer towards later September and, and October. Um, it's an ideal time to kill uh, perennial plants. They're taking that chemical with the nutrients down through and into the root system. So on a field like this, we're gonna use glyphosate. Um, you can look at the labels. And um, a lot of times, I think a lot of people think two quarts, two quarts. Well, look at the label. Two quarts um, is for a lot of our perennial plants, but more difficult control ones is three quarts to the acre. And difficult control plants like uh, Canadian thistles, if we have some of them out here, or we have some of the introduced legumes. Another thing we can add into that chemical uh, mix is some 2,4-D ester. And that will help us kill some of those introduced legumes, those perennial broad leaves that we can have out here. And if we take a look at this field here that we have today, um, over here we do have some birch foot tree foil. So even though it's predominantly brome, we're gonna have some other things out here that we wanna kill. Then our next step, we've went ahead and we've done a fall spray. The, ideally, the ideal situation is we come in in early spring and we do a prescribed burn on the, on the field. And what that allows us to do then is we do a, a nice burn, it'll encourage the flush of the, any brome we haven't killed. And it also, legumes like that fire, so it'll encourage some of the legume introduced seeds that we can have present in these old CRP fields to take off and grow. So that's a benefit. And also another benefit of doing prescribed fire, some of these are old CRP fields. When you do a burn, you get to take a really good look of any problems that might be in the field, such as ant hills, badger holes. Um, they're able you to go in and blade those distos, gopher mounds, and get that smooth so that when you're doing that uh, planting. Um, and it could be tile breaks. You know, you just haven't been over the whole field. It's got a lot of vegetation. Do we have any holes there for tile breaks? So ideally, we would do a prescribed burn. And then we're going to wait towards until the end of May. Give a chance for stuff to come back, a chance for some of those legumes that might be present, those introduced legumes. And we're going to spray it again um, at the end of May uh, with a perennial uh, rate, grass rate. Um, but we're not going to put 2,4-D ester in. 2,4-D ester does have a little bit of residual. So I feel more comfortable going with that two or three quarts of, of glyphosate, uh, like a 41% active ingredient, and, and using that kind of a rate, and, and then we're going to spray that again. Then, once we've done that, we're going to come in and then we're going to drill that native grass mix. Um, another advantage of that fire that we would have done earlier 
was we get rid of the duff layer, which is nice. But we're gonna drill it, and we wanna make sure with these native mixes that we're keeping that coulter set maybe an eighth of an inch, just cutting the ground. The grass can be a little deeper, but our form seed does better when it's just real shallow or sitting on the surface. Um, and there's some things we can do when we're running that drill that can help us, you know, maybe undoing some form seeds. The, if you got a form seed box you're running, undoing some of those hoses, every other one or all of them and when you're doing that drilling. So those are kind of the steps that we like to see when, when we go ahead and we're transitioning from an introduced grass like brome over to a native mix. There is another option though. Um, if we wanna make sure that we're, we're taking care of things out here and taking care of our legumes and making sure that brome's killed, it can be favorable and advantageous to go one whole growing season where we leave it fallow. And by doing that, we're not just letting the weeds come up and grow. We're gotta keep it sprayed. We don't wanna add back to that seed bank. But we're gonna keep it sprayed through the summer, the next fall, and then what that allows us to do is come in with a dormant seeding, which can be advantageous to those, to the forbs, the flower component in that seeding. But it does take more time, you know, to do that option. And the third option, it, isn't typical for what we deal with when we're dealing with CRP and private landowners. But the land manager, what I call the land manager option for like your Iowa DNR, your county conservation boards, you know, and for them, maybe the best option is to go two years of like a Roundup Ready crop, maybe even two years of soybeans in a row, no-till. And you're making sure everything that's here, this plant, existing plant community is killed out and then you're doing your seeding. But that's some options to think about when we're in this kind of situation.